Have you ever wondered why cheese is a delicacy in France, but feared in China? Let's dig in. Food is a basic necessity of life, but delve a bit deeper and you'll find an entire universe of stories, traditions, and values simmering in every pot. Welcome to the intriguing world of food anthropology, a realm where every bite tells a tale and every cuisine has a narrative, echoing the rhythms of culture, society, and identity. In this journey, two names echo in the halls of food anthropology, Claude Levi Strauss and Mary Douglas. These pioneers didn't just see food as sustenance, but as a rich, flavorful language speaking volumes about who we are and where we come from. As we step into a world where food becomes the mirror reflecting our cultural and societal values, a question simmers on the forefront. How does what we eat narrate the complex tapestry of human civilization? Born in Brussels and later renowned as a French anthropologist, Claude Lévi-Strauss arbored a profound intrigue towards unraveling the societal structures. His journeys across continents fueled his curiosity, leading him to observe the symbiotic relationship between humans and their culinary practices. His observations weren't confined to sophisticated dining tables, but extended to the heart of indigenous tribes and their interaction with food. The cornerstone of levi strauss's food anthropology is the culinary triangle a theoretical framework that transcends mere gastronomic preferences plunging into the depths of what food represents this triangle is articulated through three vertices the raw the cooked and the rotten each signifying a unique dialogue between nature and culture the raw vertex symbolizes nature in its pristine form The raw food, untouched by human intervention, resonates with the fundamental essence of nature. The cooked vertex represents the act of cooking as a human endeavor, transforming raw ingredients into something new, something more cultured. For instance, the meticulous preparation of French buoy base or Indian curry showcases human creativity and cultural nuances. The rotten vertex, often perceived with disdain, but when controlled and understood, fermentation or aging of food unveils a realm where nature and human intervention dance in a slow, deliberate tango. Levi Strauss's culinary triangle isn't a relic of the past and continues to resonate in modern food anthropology and culinary arts. Take, for example, chef Nobu Matsuesa, whose iconic dishes like black cod miso marry the raw elegance of Japanese sashimi with Peruvian flavors, exemplifying Levi Strauss's culinary dialogue between nature and culture. His theory paved the way for a deeper exploration into culinary practices, transcending the act of eating into a narrative of human culture and natural essence. This theoretical framework emboldens chefs, food critics, and anthropologists alike to view food not just as a source of nourishment, but as a canvas of human civilization, each dish telling a tale of tradition, innovation, and adaptation. And what about the foods we avoid? Ever wonder why certain foods are taboo in some cultures, but delicacies in others? Mary Douglas peeled back the layers of food's social significance. And what she found might surprise you. Born in Italy and later flourishing as a British anthropologist, Mary Douglas's life was as rich and varied as the food rituals she explored. Her curiosity was kindled early on, perhaps by the mingling of culinary cultures she experienced during her formative years. Her intrigue in food wasn't just a gastronomic fascination, it was a window into the intricacies of societal norms and values. As we venture into the heart of different cultures, the rituals and taboos surrounding food unveil a narrative deeply rooted in religious, moral, and social fabric. The religious dietary laws, such as the laws of kosher and halal, are not merely dietary guidelines, but a manifestation of faith and communal identity. The visuals of kosher butchering or halal food preparations juxtaposed with the communal gatherings during Sabbath or Ramadan paint a vivid picture of the intertwined nature of food and faith. Festival foods, on the other hand, show that each culture has its unique palette of festival foods. Whether it's the mooncakes of mid-autumn festival or the myriad colors of Holi's traditional dishes. These foods are not just about celebration, but an homage to historical and cultural milestones. Social hierarchies and food highlight that the elite's indulgence in luxurious foods like caviar or truffles isn't merely a gastronomic choice, but a statement of social standing. 
Visuals of opulent dining juxtaposed with the simplicity of everyday meals highlight the stark contrasts and societal hierarchies. Mary Douglas's work has been a torchbearer in understanding how food is a reflection of a community's ethos and moral compass. Her explorations shed light on why we eat what we eat and how the act of dining together can be a reaffirmation of social bonds and communal values. Through her lens, we see that the dining table is not just a place for nourishment, but a stage where the drama of social norms, values, and hierarchies unfolds with every meal. The reverberations of Levi-Strauss and Douglas's works continue to echo through the corridors of culinary arts, food marketing, and social studies. Their perspectives have armed modern day professionals with a lens to delve beyond the surface, to see food as a narrative rich with societal implications. In the realm of culinary arts, renowned chefs and culinary experts often draw inspiration from the theoretical frameworks laid down by Levi-Strauss and Douglas. For instance, the idea of molecular gastronomy often touches upon the essence of the culinary triangle, exploring the transformation of raw to cooked, albeit through a scientific lens. Moving on to food anthropologists, the tribe of food anthropologists growing ever so steadily often tip their hats to these pioneers as they dissect culinary traditions to reveal underlying societal norms and values. When it comes to global fusion of cuisines in today's global village, the fusion of cuisines is more than a trendy culinary movement. It's a reflection of an interconnected world. The blending of flavors, ingredients, and cooking techniques from different corners of the globe is a testament to the evolving narrative of societal interactions and cultural amalgamation. These real-world applications and modern explorations are a tribute to the profound insights of Levi-Strauss and Douglas, showcasing how food continues to be a robust medium to explore, understand, and celebrate the diverse tapestry of human civilization. Through the lens of food, we continue to narrate the ever-evolving story of humanity one plate at a time. Now that we've simmered in the profound theories and real-world implications, it's time to stir the pot of discussion. I invite you to share your own culinary tales and observations about food and culture. Have you encountered a dish that narrated a cultural tale, or perhaps experienced a food ritual that resonated with community values? I'd love to hear your stories. Engage with me on social media using the hashtag culinary tales, or drop your stories in the comments section below. Share pictures or anecdotes of foods that hold a cultural or societal significance to you. I'd love to hear you. As we close this chapter of our culinary exploration, the essence of what Levi-Strauss and Douglas taught us resonates deeply. Food is more than sustenance. It's a narrative, a tradition, a reflection of our collective human experience. Every dish we savor, every food ritual we partake in, is a page in the grand narrative of human civilization.